a lot to see and do in Disney California Adventure. So how do you know what you must do? Let's go through 20 must do's in DCA. This is the second park at Disneyland Resort and has a bit of a tumultuous history. It opened as a very California themed theme park with an interesting review. People didn't love it, but it's gone through a lot of changes over the years and now people tend to be fans. We've got must do's across the entire park today from Buena Vista Street to Avengers Campus to Cars Land, all the way to Pixar Pier and everywhere in between. And we're gonna check them all out so you know what to do when you get here. And also we have a special treat because my brother is here with me. Say hi. Hello. Uh, he is a Disney Worlder. This is his first ever time in Disney California Adventure this trip. And uh, he's gonna do a little review of some of the things that we've experienced on the trip. So you know the perspective of someone who's never been to Disneyland before. All right, our first must do is here in Hollywood Land at the Animation Building. There's actually a lot to do in this building, a lot of very different things to do. And you don't have to do them all, but you must step in here and you must do at least one of these things because they rock. So as you can see, the animation building is very cool. They've got Disney music playing in here, Disney scenes, and lots of seating. It's dark, it tends to be quiet unless it's pouring rain. So it's a great spot to get out of the crowds if that's all you wanna use this must-do for. But there are also several attractions in here. First attraction is Turtle Talk with Crush, where you can see a show where little kiddos and adults like can interact with Crush the Turtle and he actually responds to you. My favorite attraction in here is the Animation Academy, which I actually did for the very first time yesterday. We drew Oswald and Wally. Um, and this is a super fun attraction where a Disney artist takes you through drawing a character. And they've got different characters that they do throughout the day so that you can go and draw your favorite character. If you want to do an advanced class, you can do one of the more advanced options. At character close-up right now, you can meet Anna and Elsa at their royal welcome. So if you've got some Anna and Elsa lovers, you can step in here. And another great part of the animation building is Sorcerer's Workshop. This is kind of an interactive experience, but this room is really cool because you can see the magic mirror here who will probably wake up in a second. And there's lots of little sort of activities that show you a bit about animation. This needs to be faster, faster. Or you can watch animation happen here. Goofy's walking. Oh, I, I made him walk backwards. No, Goofy, stop moonwalking. Okay, Goofy's walking. And that's Sorcerer's Workshop, super cute. I love stepping in here. You can even draw your own animations to put in the spinny things and make your own animations happen. Another fun fact about the animation building is one time this song was playing, Once Upon a Dream. So Emma and I were waltzing off camera just for fun. And I accidentally hit her in the head with my full metal water bottle. Um, she was okay, but it was funny after we figured out she was okay. You also step into a really great store after this called Off the Page. This is a Disney art store where you can buy sketches from Disney artists who are actively sketching in the store, figurines and paintings and things like that, signs. Um, so definitely a place to stop could be a great souvenir. Looks like we've got Mulan and Li Shang. We're gonna be here a while if you're gonna look through that whole book. Is this alphabetical? It looks like it might yes, be. Yes, it is alphabetical. Jack's a big Wally -E fan, so I'm there. that's where he's headed. This is a hefty book. It is a hefty book. All right, Jack, we have to give the animation building our ratings. As a Disney Worlder, what would you compare this to? Ooh, uh, it kind of reminds me of World Showplace a little bit when that's open for the Food and Wine Festival. Okay, okay. Um, just, you know, a quiet space to go inside and relax for a little bit. Cool. Although when we were here in the rain yesterday, it was not quiet or relaxing because I think no. the entire park went in there. Yeah, it was a nice a nice group effort. Um, I'm going to be rating all of our must-dos from on a, on a TV or movie scale. I guess movie. I'm going to rate this one G. Everybody, everybody loves it in here. Babies, everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Oh, yeah, G. definitely the animation class. Those were so much more fun than I thought. Yeah. And I'm a terrible drawer. Like, my yeah. handwriting is completely illegible. But I'm actually really happy with the drawings I was able to produce. Yeah. Was drawing along with the Disney artist. I told him he'd like it, and he didn't believe me, but then we went. We even came back to do a second time to do Wally. We did. That's his favorite. If, you, if that hasn't been made clear in the first four minutes of this video already. We might have mentioned it. <laughs> right, as you might be able to guess, we are headed into Avengers Campus, the Marvel themed land here in Disneyland. This one is super unique, especially if you're a Disney Worlder, as you'll know, we don't have a ton of Marvel representation in Disney World outside of things like Guardians of the Galaxy. But our first must do is pretty eye-catching. It's right here in front of us. It is Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. This is actually a re-theme of this park's Tower of Terror attraction. So it is a drop tower attraction where you help Rocket break the rest of the Guardians out of their captivity at the Collectors. This has an absolutely amazing queue. It's a really fun ride. The music changes when you ride it. It's absolutely a blast and people do tend to love it. I I, however, 
I'm not people. It is the Disney ride that makes me the most motion sick. And I wasn't expecting that because I don't hear people talk about it. So this is me talking about it in case you are motion sickness prone. But Emma was fine. You were fine on it. Oh, I was fine. People, I a lot of people are fine on it. It's a great ride. Um, and I, even though I am motion sick, I do go through the queue because the queue is so amazing. So I'll wait with my friends and then I'll check an exit. Still, even though it did make me motion sick, I'm glad I did this one at least once. So it is definitely a must do. I'm giving it a PG-13 mostly on motion sickness and also because uh, Rocket Raccoon is like too cool to be anything lower than PG-13. Uh, how would you compare this to something in Disney World? I really was not a big fan of this one. Like yeah. I love the Gardens of the Galaxy theming. This ride looks incredible and the theming on the inside really blew me away, especially yeah. all the things you can see with the collectors. But if you're comparing it to the Florida Tower of Terror, I think you're going to be left wanting more. Yeah, that, see it's, it's definitely an interesting controversy because a lot of people do like this better than Tower. Interesting. Yeah, but you should let us know in the comments which you like better so that we can get to the bottom of this mystery of which is better. Obviously, Jack and I are Team Tower, but you know, let us know in the comments. Just next door, we have two dining locations that we are roping into one for our must-dos list. We have Pim Test Kitchen and Pim Taste Lab. These are two restaurants that are themed to the Ant-Man and the Wasp Pim Particles, where at the restaurant you'll find food and drinks that are larger than life or smaller than life. They've been shrunken or grown with those Pim Particles. And at the Tasting Lab, you'll find some relatively interesting concoctions. This is absolutely a must-do. The food is amazing, the drinks are amazing. Thor and Iron Man are over there and when you're sitting at Pim Test Kitchen, you can just look at them, which is great. I highly recommend everything I've ever had at Pim Test Kitchen, Pim Taste Lab. We might grab a little something just to just to prove the point. We're headed inside Pim Test Kitchen. Even if you don't want to eat here, just step inside. The theming's really fun. There's a pretzel conveyor belt where you can see the pretzels getting Pim particled to be much, much, much smaller or bigger. Both have mobile order. I do recommend using mobile order. We're not right now because I am filming on my phone and I didn't think to do it, but I recommend using mobile order. It's a great way to skip the line. Just make sure you're checking it out a little bit before you want to head over there just in case the mobile order windows are out a little further. Basically, if a mobile order window fills up, it'll send you to the next one. So it could be like a 30 minute wait. If you're across the park though and headed this way, that isn't so bad. So just check it a little in advance of when you want to head over. Another great detail in here is that the soda fountains are fueled by these giant him sized um, tapped sodas and then you do have coca-cola freestyles which is great for more options Pim Taste Lab is actually the outdoor bar you can see right here it has separate mobile order is where you'll get those alcoholic drinks and things like that um, I love all the drinks here and right now because there is a food and wine festival going on at DCA you can actually get a flight of some of their cocktails and beers which is super cool even though it's breakfast you can get that amazing quantum pretzel here this is a a uh, 453.8 gram Bavarian style pretzel with sharp cheddar cheese, beer sauce, uh, which this is why this pretzel is so good, but the pretzel itself is amazing as well. I highly recommend this if you're a pretzel person. Uh, we also grabbed the cold brew infusion cinnamon and spice. This is a cinnamon caramel cold brew with cardamom cream foam, and it has some cinnamon toast crunch on top, which I think is supposed to be tiny French toast here. But uh, yeah, this is our, bre our very healthy, balanced breakfast. Mmm, that's really tasty. So this is the same cold brew you get elsewhere in the park. It's a Joffrey's cold brew. Very bitter, very caffeinated. You got this amazing spiced cardamom and some drizzle of caramel. The main flavor is cinnamon, which is to be expected, but I feel like it gives it a little bit of like a Christmas spice kind of vibe because of the cardamom. It balances out really nicely and it's still not overly sweet, which you'll find with cold brews in the parks is that they tend to be like have super sweet ingredients, but because the cold brew is so bitter, it balances out to be a like nice mild, coffee um still obviously on the sweet side i got just a black cold brew but definitely tasty pretzel dump time so good plus from your seat at pim you can often see the characters walking by and even the avengers assemble stunt show got distracted by the show and then i was like did i ever talk about the pretzel it's a delicious pretzel this is my favorite disney pretzel that i've ever had beats all the ones in disney world my favorite disney world pretzel is the pongu pongu pretzel in pandora the beer cheese in this is so amazing it's got the bitterness from the beer while still being like obviously delicious melty cheesy the pretzel itself has a nice crisp on the outside but is mostly doughy and soft it's the perfect amount of salt which i think is almost impossible to accomplish in a pretzel it's always too much salt or too little they've they've done it folks 
It's better than any Disney pretzel. You're totally right about yeah. that. Uh, it's just soft and gooey and the big salt. And I always eat my pretzels with mustard, which you can get inside. It's not a fancy Dijon mustard, which I would have liked. Mustard. But, you know, yellow mustard. It's classic. It's American. I'm all for it. Bring the mustard in your pockets. Pim Test Kitchen is getting a PG out of me. So it's pretty exciting, but I, I still think pretty much everybody can, can come here. Although a baby not, might not like the food as much. <laughs> Our next must-do is still at Avengers Campus, just next door at Web Slingers. This is the Worldwide Engineering Brigade, where geniuses like Peter Parker have been working on new technology, including tech that will help you sling webs from your very hands. It is a super fun ride. It is technically a shooter-style competitive attraction where you earn points as you sling webs to try to stop the spider bot problem that sort of emerges. Uh, we're gonna hop in line for this one. It has a 55-minute standby wait, but there is a single rider. We used the single rider last night. Waited what? 10 minutes? Oh, not even. Yeah, like eight minutes. So we're gonna hop in the single rider right now and see uh, if which one of us is uh, more pro at slinging webs. We're off. I got 153. He got 147, so I won. Again. I am Spider-Man. Um, Emma beats me every time, although I think that I've learned something new on this trip about how to get a higher score. Hit the special bots, maybe close your eyes. Um, as, as you guys might know, I do ride Toy Story Mania and Disney World without the 3D glasses, and I find that that gets me a higher score. I am not good at these things. All right, we've escaped Avengers Campus. Not that they were holding us there captive, but you, you never know. You can't trust you were superheroes. Captive, so it was an escape for me. I was? Yeah. Oh wow, I thought you wanted to do this. The next last two we're gonna talk about is right around in this area, is kind of the start of it. This is the current food festival here at DCA. DCA is home to a lot of festivals, holiday events, and perhaps the biggest of the whole year is the California Adventure Food and Wine Festival, which is going on during our visit. Some other festivals include the Lunar New Year Festival. You'll see a lot of holiday offerings around Christmas time. And of course, this park is where you'll find the after hours special Halloween event, Oogie Boogie Bat. These special events are going to be included in your park ticket. Others are not. They're going to be an additional charge. Regardless, one of them might be a must do as long as it's happening during your visit. Food and wine is definitely a fun one. There are chef's demonstrations, tons of food booths with special items, specialty food at some of the restaurants, live music and performances. It's absolutely a blast. We've loved it here. Um, and it's very different from Disney World festivals if you're used to them because of this thing called the Sip and Savor Pass where you can pay one fee to get a pass for eight or four items. With these passes, you can then head to a booth and just scan the pass to pay for your items. So it's about 60 bucks, a little more for the eight item pass, which is a huge deal because a lot of those items that are included on it can be over $8. So it's a big money saving, super convenient to do that. You can also always do the Disney gift card thing where you budget by buying a gift card of how much you want to spend at the festival and do that. We actually still have five credits on one of our Sip and Saver passes. We got two, which was a little overzealous of us. That's 16 oh, yeah. items, but we only have five left to make it through the, for the end of our trip, so we might grab something. So on top of everything else, one of the most striking things about this festival, look at this. No one is eating on top of trash cans. These are covered tables. I'm blown away. All right, I got my tasting passport to say what this stuff is. But we got some items. Something interesting about this festival, if you're going, is that you do not have to pay at the booth that the item you're buying is at. You can pay at any of the booths for all the items you want to get at all the booths. Uh, it's really unique, but also awesome because it's really nice to not have to wait in that line multiple times. Thanks to the random lady who flagged us down. Yeah, of, uh, just a woman stopped us and was like, get out of this line. You don't need to be here. And we were like, thank you, random woman. It was like she was our fairy godmother. Um, but we went with the olive oil cake and the guava lychee mule um, from two of the different booths. The guava lychee mule is alcoholic, which means you can't get it with the Sip and Savor Pass, but we were able to get this olive oil cake with our Sip and Savor Pass. I'm trying the weird Jello cube. I'm trying to get a little of everything. Do you like olive oil cake? I don't know. I'm about to find out. Mmm. Mm. Lemony. Oh, it's good. The gel is weird. It is good. It's really, really moist. Like incredibly moist, super, super dense. Wine Bar George has olive oil have, cake. I have been there. Did you have the olive oil cake? No. Well, what were you doing? Sorry. Um, you weren't with me to tell me to get it. I know. That olive oil cake is the best olive oil cake I've had. This is very good though. It's super lemony, super dense. I think it's tasty. It's awesome that it comes from a booth. Olive oil cake is nice and balanced sweetness because olive oil is like obviously a kind of savory flavor. But most of the flavor that you get here is lemon, citrusy. So if you like like lemon cake or like lemon loaf from Starbucks, I think that you should try this. It's really, really tasty. Ooh. 
This is good. Um, it tastes like if you mix, it tastes kind of like a cocktail made from one of those little fruit, mixed fruit, tropical fruit cups. You're so right. That's exactly what it tastes like. It just tastes like the fruit cup. Yeah, I can't really taste the alcohol, so I think this one might be dangerous, or it just might not be that alcoholic. Hard to say. But it's really tasty. It reminds me of a Pog Juice cocktail, too, just from that guava flavor and the lychee kind of filling the the other tropical fruit juice flavors. This is an awesome cocktail, super sunny, and it's a full big cocktail portion, which I'm kind of surprised by because a lot of times festivals will do smaller cocktails. So awesome. Festival has been a win for us this trip. We've been big fans. And if there's something going on, Lunar New Year, food and wine, whatever, during your visit to DCA, it's a must do. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a PG-13 because the festivals really are geared toward, more towards adult. Although sometimes there's like character meet and greets that are special, which could be geared towards kiddos, but I'm still going PG-13. We've made it to Cars Land. A Emma's really the mater of our Lightning McQueen mater duo. This is an absolutely spectacular land. Even if you're not the biggest Cars fan, this land is so, so amazing. The design as you walk around is so well thought out. There are so many details to see, and it has probably the best ride in Disney California Adventure. One of the best rides in Disneyland. You can do a meet and greet with Mater and Lightning. Not at the same time because they're too big. There's only one parking space and they are cars. But there are lots of must-dos in this land to cover. Really just you need to explore it, but we're gonna point out two definite, definite must-dos that you need to do. You might remember Cozy Cone Motel from the movie. It is a motel where uh, the cars stay in the giant traffic cones. Super cute design. And here in Cars Land, it has been adjusted to be a quick service location. My brother is pointing out that uh, coming into the land, I should have said ka -chow because I'm the Lightning McQueen. And he's not wrong. I am I was just strolling through here and I saw this hidden detail of Buzz Lightyear under the traffic cone from Toy Story 2, we decided. I think it's Toy Story 2. From Toy Story 2. That is the most fun hidden detail ever of all time. The Cozy Cone Hotel is home to a couple of different quick service stands. We've got Chili Cone Queso, which is pretty much the star of our must -dos here. This is where you can get a bread cone filled with bacon, mac, and cheese. Also known as a handwich. I don't know why you keep calling it that. There's also ice cream cones, or you can get ice cream cones. You can get churros over here, and then on the other side, we've got frozen cone concoctions, which uh, weirdly is where you can get a chimichanga, but you know. And there's also popcorn, where you can get some popcorn. Popcorn. Though I wouldn't say that the cones are the best quality food that you'll find. Um, in fact, it's some of the food that I've been the most like meh on. I still think it's a must do at least once because eating mac and cheese out of a bread cone that you bought out of a giant traffic cone, kind of a singular experience that really encapsulates DCA. I'm gonna give this one a G because everyone can enjoy a bread cone. Uh, what's your Disneyland, com Disney World comparison? Oh, this is this is Magic Kingdom food. This Magic is, you Kingdom know, the food. Classic, you know, yeah. carnival kind of. Yep, Magic Kingdom food. You'll notice it's really crowded in this area, and that's because we're headed to our next bus too. And so are all these people. They're actually in line for a ride, and uh, we'll zoom past the line to show you what ride it is. This is the line for Radiator Springs Racers. This is the e-ticket, which is Disney language for big, flashy, fun, very popular ride here in Cars Land, where you get to board a Cars Land style car and take a tour through Radiator Springs before a race at the end. Now, a couple of things make this ride really amazing. If you're a Disney Worlder, you might uh, know that the ride system is the one that you use in Test Track, but it's a lot more fun than Test Track. You race through this amazing vista of the Radiator Springs Mountains nearby. The race itself is very fun at the end as you line up right next to a car full of other guests and race to the finish line. And there are a number of dark ride elements where you explore Radiator Springs at night, seeing all of your favorite characters from cars and even getting a little bit of a makeover ahead of the big race. I'm not like a car super fan. This ride's amazing. One of my favorites to do in Disneyland. It's one that you'll often find Emma and I hopping over here right at the last second to do after a big day of filming in Disneyland. We just love Radiator Springs racers. It is so, 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 so much fun. If you take away one ride must do in Disney California Adventure, it should be this. I'm gonna give it PG because I think it's fun for everyone, but there is a height requirement and it's very fast. So PG for this one. Disneyland, Disney World comparison. Oh, it's just like Test Track. It's, it's. I think it's newer than Test Track and a I'd say times I better. like it better than the current Test Track, but you know, I'm a sucker for nostalgia. Old Test Track we with the crash, love test, crash dummies. test dummy. I will well, say Test Track is definitely faster. So yeah. if you're a thrill seeker, this one might leave you wanting a little yeah. bit more, but overall I think it's a much better, much more yeah. well-rounded attraction. If you want to see how Jack and I feel about Test Track, you can just look at how we feel about Lumpy, the crash test dummy in this photo. 
Our next must-do is to explore San Francisco Square. This is the newest land in Disney's California Adventure. It is a light overlay of Pacific Wharf. So if you haven't been in a minute, you might remember Pacific Wharf. It is pretty much the same. You'll just notice a lot more details that are inspired by the San Francisco City from Big Hero 6. Uh, you'll notice some graffiti celebrating Big Hero 6. A lot of the signs are now in English and Japanese, which is really cool. But it's absolutely still got the character of Pacific Wharf, plus a little bit more fun San Francisco theme. So I absolutely love the way this area turned out. I think it's kept the character, it's kept all the offerings that you know and love, while now having this really fun and exciting theme. San Francisco Square is mostly going to be food offerings, um, and there are a number of really amazing ones. So right when you come in, you can do the Boudin Bakery Tour. This is a self-guided walking tour that takes you through the Boudin Bakery where you can see them actually making the sourdough that you can eat around Disney California Adventure and Disneyland. If you want some of that sourdough, head to Aunt Cass Cafe, which is the rethemed Pacific Wharf Cafe, to now be Heroes Aunt Cass's restaurant. Lucky Fortune Cookery, which is going to be a restaurant with a lot of Asian fusion-inspired dishes. I had an amazing banh mi sandwich over here one time that was awesome. You've got Rita's Turbine Blenders, which is Rita's Italian Ice, if you're familiar with the chain. Um, just frozen, nice cool down drinks that you can grab here. There is a Ghirardelli if you're looking for some ice cream. And you've got Cocina Cucamonga, which is a Mexican grill with some amazing birria options. Um, and of course, finally, the San Francisco Cerveceria is right next door, which is where you can grab some beers. So lots of different places to eat. I have never had a bad item in the San Francisco area. So, you know, we're worth checking out, worth looking around. Maybe grab some lunch over here or just a snack. It's also peak lunchtime right now and there's tons of seating available, which is awesome, even with all these different places that you can eat. Even if you don't want to grab lunch over here, you should stroll around, maybe check out some of the Baymax merch at San Francisco Maker's Market, even if it's just a glance at it, or you can even meet Baymax. I'm gonna give San Francisco up here, I'm giving it PG, because I don't think Big Hero 6 is that big of a kid's movie. I do think kids would love meeting Baymax, but I just think that this area is geared a little older. Um, Disney World comparison, Jack, go. Oh, this area I think is really neat. You know, this is one of the spaces of this park along with Pixar Pier that really turned me around on a lot of the intellectual property that's coming to Epcot. Yeah. Both these areas, as I understand, were kind of generic before. And seeing the characters and the... the it's so unique. I really like it. It's, it's, I'm kind of excited for what's coming to Epcot now. Yeah, me too. Speaking of characters, get out of the way! Oh, yeah. Get out of the way! <laughs> This is another thing you'll see at Food & Wine. Hi! All right, we've made it to the open center, the heart of Disney California Adventure. Uh, we are looking over across at Pixar Pier, which is our next stop. This is another land. When DCA first opened, it was, of course, kind of like a boardwalk-themed carnival pier situation, and they added a Pixar overlay that is just wonderful to explore, especially if you're a Pixar lover. So let's head in. Let's check it out. Right as you enter Pixar Pier, you'll find our first must-do at Lamplight Lounge. This is a Pixar-themed bar with Pixar-themed drinks and Pixar-themed eats, a lot of amazing concept art and prop replicas on the wall. Prop replicas, like they're real, but it's animated. Um, Lamplight Lounge, absolutely spectacular, and it's one of the harder reservations to get in Disneyland. Emma and I actually could not pull off getting this reservation for our first two trips and just finally ate there for the first time on our Disneyland and Disney California Adventure Perfect Day, which you can see on the channel now if you would like to see a full review of the restaurant. If you can't get a reservation, there is also the option to walk up at Boardwalk Dining at uh, Lamplight Lounge, which has a more limited menu, but is available right here on the boardwalk at this outdoor seating um, that also fills up very quickly so if you want to do that make sure you're there right when the restaurant opens the reason this is a must do is because the food is amazing the drinks are amazing the staff is amazing and if you time it right you could get a view of world of color one from the restaurant which is absolutely amazing because it is down on the water we actually managed to make this happen the other night kind of accidentally it was just the reservation that happened to pop up for us and we got it at 8 p.m world of color was at 9 and we got to watch world of color from down there so beautiful, so cool. Um, our dinner was amazing, our drinks were amazing. Just definitely a must do to check out. If you can get that reservation, if not, you can try the walk up, but at least try. Trying is the must do. Giving this one a PG-13 just because it is a lounge. Um, Disney World comparison, 
Uh, oh, this reminds me a lot of the boardwalk at the boardwalk, the boardwalk. hotel. Yeah. Uh, to the point that I kind of wish they would put Pixar there, but I, I'm sure I am going to get. No, I that think is that not going to be a popular opinion. I don't know. I like it. I think this yeah, place put is Put Coco everywhere. Wonderful. Yeah. Put Coco in the Norway pavilion. Yeah. Down the way, you'll find adorable snowman frosted treats. If you've watched any of our Disneyland videos before, you might know that this is my favorite themed treat stand in any Disney park. Before I'd ever come to Disneyland, I used to remember writing for allears.net about adorable snowman frosted treats and just thinking about how fun it was that there is a food location themed to the adorable snowman, which is my favorite scene from Monsters, Inc. I love the character. And I love when he serves them yellow snow cones and says, whoa, whoa, it's lemon. And you can get It's Lemon here. So they do have non-dairy soft serve here. They've got lemon, It's Lemon, and It's Mango, as well as some specialty options too. And I said I wasn't gonna get anything, but I lied and I think we should get it. Okay. We got the It's Lemon because, and it is lemon. It is not yellow snow flavored. Mm. And it's so good. It tastes kind of like a creamier frozen lemonade. Um, so really great for a hotter day, which Whoa. has turned out to be today. Super zingy, acidic flavor, but still like creamy and cold and refreshing. For a non-dairy treat, this is phenomenal. Yeah, he's had a lot of non-dairy this week that has really just blown his mind. This one's definitely going to be rated G because what kiddo doesn't love soft serve? And they have exciting things for adult too, like the chili lime mango margarita, which sounds really good. Hey, Jack, do you think I can name all of those characters on that Coco billboard? Uh, I can definitely name all the characters on the Wally billboard. Really? Do it. Uh, that's Wally and that's Steve. Oh no! We've got another must do in the very eye catching Incredicoaster, which you can see stretches along the entire back border of the park. It is this huge roller coaster designed to look like the wooden or steel coasters from the boardwalk. It is so, so, so much fun. It has an upside down loop right around the Pixar Pier logo. Lots of those interior tunnels. You can see the red where you'll see different Incredibles elements. You can even smell chocolate chip cookies on the ride. It is an absolute blast. Very, very thrilling. Um, um, and definitely fun. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Incredible are here today, uh, you know, at the ride. Unfortunately, the ride is not here today. It is closed right now for refurbishment. It closed the first day we got here, and Jack is really happy about that. Yeah, really happy. <laughs> is what he would say. Um, yeah, so this is a super fun ride. Definitely a must-do if it's open while you're here. Wow, um, <laughs> I, I definitely recommend it. It is very thrilling and is a true, true coaster. My parents don't have issues riding most of the coasters or any of the coasters really in Disney World. They do, however, have an issue riding this one. They did not like how this coaster made them feel. Um, so it's not for everybody because it is on the more intense side as Disney coasters go. So fun. I think try it once, but if coasters are a little rough on you, it might be worth skipping and watching a ride through online instead. I'm giving this one a PG-13 because, again, height requirement and it is very thrilling. Um, and what would you compare it to in Disney World? Not that oh, you've done it. Oh, it's just like Rock and Roller Coaster if Rock and Roller Coaster was closed. Rock and Roller Coaster is closed. Oh, it's just like Rock and Roller Coaster then. It's not really like Rock and Roller Coaster. I love that idea. Down the way from Incredicoaster, you'll find our next must-do at Toy Story Midway Mania. Bo Peep is hanging out outside right now. This is another shooter attraction where you use little pop shooters to play different Midway games with the Toy Story characters. It is a blast. It is pretty much exactly the same as the one at Disney's Hollywood Studios, um, but definitely a super fun attraction. The big difference is that you can actually talk to Mr. Potato Head outside of the attraction, so you can go up and see him without having to actually wait in the queue, which is really cool. But this is a super fun ride. It's super competitive. You wear 3D glasses. You get to compete with your family for who can get the highest score. There are even secret levels, which is awesome. So it's certainly a must-do. Tends to have a bit longer of a line because it is super, super popular, but absolutely a blast and a must-do. Gonna rate this one G. Or maybe, I'll, I'll rate this one PG because I think that the games get a little intense. Disney World comparison? Uh, it's Toy Story Mania, but the queue is outside, so not as good. <laughs> Mr. Potato Head's outside. Hey, That's fine. Oh, Jesse showed up too. Oh, hey. Even if you don't want to ride Toy Story Mania, you should go chat with Mr. Potato Head. He is responsive, so he will respond to you, ask you questions. So go chat with Mr. Potato Head. It's not every day you get to talk to a giant talking potato. And if it is, I want to do what you're doing with your life. Oh, so you want to be an editor.
Now this is not a must-do. It's an unofficial must-do for us. But uh, we really love that the Midway games uh, that you can play along the pier are all Pixar themed with kind of unique themes. They do cost money to play the games, but you've got some super cute ones. You've got La Luna Star Catcher, Wally Space Race, Heinlich's Candy Corn Toss, and Bullseye Stallion Stampede. They're classic Midway games, but souped up a little bit. Um, the prizes you can win from them are pretty fun. In Bullseye, you can get a bunch of different Bullseye horses. So I, I think these are super cute if you're willing to drop a little bit of money on the token to play the games. It could be a super fun way to get a cheaper souvenir. Probably the most eye-catching ride is our next must -do. This is the Pixar Pal Around. Now this is a classic Ferris wheel and a not so classic Ferris, Ferris wheel. So you can either ride in a fixed uh, gondola, like these ones here that are just kind of regular gondolas, or you can ride in a swinging gondola, like those ones up there that are actively swinging high, high up over the water. This is a relatively thrilling attraction, perhaps more thrilling than you might think. Now we rode with a pretty little girl the other day and she had a great time. She didn't think it was too high. She got a little scared at the end, I think, but she was able to come back from it. Emma did not enjoy this. She did do it. Emma's very scared of heights, um, but if you're scared of heights, I would not do a swinging gondola. They are very intense. They swing a little bit harder than you might think they swing, um, but it's a very fun ride. It is a must do here at DCA because it's the icon of the park, uh, but you can do swinging or non-swinging. I won't judge either way. I'm gonna give this one a PG-13 because of the heights and the swinging gondola element. Disney World comparison? Oh, it's just like the Carousel of Progress if it was five <laughs> times bigger on its side and way faster. Oh, and no animatronics. It's just like the Carousel just like of Progress. It, except for all those things. We've made it to our next land, which is Paradise Gardens Park. Most people agree this is kind of the most lame part of DCA now that it has been improved upon in many of the other areas. But we do still have a must-do here, and there are a couple of fun, simpler, more like old-fashioned rides you can do here. Jumping Jellyfish will hop you well up into the air. Silly Symphony Swings is a classic swing ride, and Golden Zephyr puts you in a futuristic chrome spaceship to fly out as well. Um, none of those are going to be our must-dos, although if you're interested, they do exist, and I find them to be pretty fun. But our must is going to be over here at Goofy Sky School. Goofy Sky School is a roller coaster, but it is less of a roller coaster that you might think and more of one that you might expect at maybe your local theme park. It is, you sit in these little cars and you swing pretty hard around curves and up and down little hills. It's a blast, it's pretty fun, and it's a bit scarier than you might think. It is themed to Goofy teaching you to fly an airplane, which is fun. Um, and you can see it's pretty thrilling up there. Uh, this one is classified as a roller coaster, as you can find out in our cross country roller coaster where we tried to ride every Disney coaster in the US in just one day. You can find out if we succeeded in that video that's on the channel now, but Goofy's, Goofy Sky School was on our list. Um, it's a blast, it's fun, it's a must do if you're spending the day in DCA. Um, but just keep in mind that the heights can be a little thrilling here as well. This one I'm giving a PG-13. I'm gonna give this PG actually. There's a height requirement, but I do think that kiddos will tend to love this one. Also, for our Disney Worlders, if you miss Primeval World, which is no longer available in Animal Kingdom, this is Primeval World. It's the same, just with a slightly different theme. Uh, what's your Disneyland comparison? Or Disney World comparison, did I just steal it? No, this isn't Primeval World. What is it? Primeval World was the big circle cars that spun around. Wow, fake fan. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it was this. No, it was not this. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. We're both right. It's similar, but, but it's the not cars, the same. The cars are different, but it's the same ride system. It's it's different. It's the same. It's different. It's the same. It's different. All right. In addition to whatever you were already telling us in the comments, now tell us if Primeval World and Goofy Sky School are the same ride or different. Uh, we have lots of requests today. We've made our way back around to the side of the lake again, across from Pixar Pier. And this is where we're going to talk about a major, major, major must-do. And that is the Nighttime Spectacular in this park. The Nighttime Spectacular in this park is called World of Color. That is the regular show. Right now, for the 100th anniversary, they are instead showing World of Color 1. But whatever show is showing, if it's the holiday version, whatever. These shows have fountains rising out of the water to shoot beautiful, projected shows as well as well like beautiful lights world of color is a very appropriate name because it literally looks like the air fills with a gradient rainbow of color it is such a spectacular show it has pyrotechnics and projections and music you know and love as well as an original song um it, this made 
This show made Emma and I cry an embarrassing amount last time we were here. Like, really an embarrassing amount, which you can see in our Disney California Adventure and Disneyland Perfect Day. Absolutely a must-do to see this show. Uh, something to note is that to get any prime viewing areas, you do need to join a virtual queue that opens at noon each day, and the yellow and blue areas are going to be the best sections to be able to watch this show. So you can join that virtual queue in the Disneyland app at noon each day. And the closer to noon you're, you get it, the more likely you are to get a good spot. If you get that virtual queue, you can watch the show from here. If you don't get a virtual queue, you're welcome to watch it from elsewhere around the lagoon. And of course, just like we did, we watched it from Lamplight Lounge the other day, which was pretty darn cool too. So lots of spots to watch it from. If you're staying at Pixar Place Hotel, you can actually watch it from the hotel up there, which is also what uh, Emma and I did with my parents last time we were here. So lots of options. Uh, I'm bringing this one G because everyone loves looking at really cool nighttime spectaculars. Disney World comparison? Oh, definitely harmonious at Epcot, but yeah. I do like uh, World of Color better because as you'll notice, no death tacos. No death tacos. The uh, fountains actually are in the lagoon right now and rise up during the show. So during the day, you get this nice cool lagoon and during the night, all the tech and stuff comes out of the water. And it's such a pretty park. It's really nice that the views aren't being ruined the way they are at Epcot. Exactly. Although they're not anymore. Oh. You know that show ended? News to me. Wow. You should really follow allears.net. I should. All right. You'll notice we're in a pretty lush green area, and that's for our next must-do, which is to explore Grizzly Peak. This is the sort of uh, Redwoods-themed, outdoorsy-themed section of this park. Uh, it's a beautiful land, and this path that we're on right now is called the Grizzly Peak Pass. A great place to escape from the crowds, feel a little bit like you're walking in nature, which is awesome. Um, and there are a couple of ways to explore Grizzly Peak if you just want to stroll on this pass and get out of the crowds a bit, bypass some of the larger areas. That's great. That's a great way to do it. You can also come through Grizzly Peak and often spot character meet and greets, including some pretty interesting ones. Um, I have met Carl from up over here, I think during the holidays. There are really fun theming elements throughout Grizzly Peak that are worth checking out. It's also just a very beautiful land um, that looks a lot like kind of the natural landscapes of California. So you have to explore it in those ways. If the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail is open, that can be super fun to look at. There are some amazing photo ops with the grizzly-shaped mountain in Grizzly Peak. Uh, and if you're interested in getting a little wet, you can ride Grizzly River Run, which is the raft ride in this park. Um, I've heard it is super fun. This is actually one of the rides I've never done. And it's been relatively chilly on this trip until today, so we decided to skip it this time. And now I think we don't want to get wet. No, I don't want to get wet. So no Grizzly River Run for us. Um, but that's not a must-do. That's why it's a part of Explore Grizzly, because if you like a water ride, then it is a must-do. But if you don't want to get wet, it is absolutely not a must-do. That's a lot of water. Anyone can enjoy walking through Grizzly Peak. I think your kiddos might get a little bored, but then your kiddos will love the raft ride. Well, you probably won't. So it's right in the middle there. Uh, Disney World comparison? Oh, it's I've got a great one. Just like Cali River Rapids, I've never ridden it and don't plan to because I don't want to get wet. This seems a lot better than Cali River Rapids as someone who's ridden it. Grizzly Peak is home to one attraction must do though, and that is Soarin'. So Soarin' is an attraction where you fly in a simulator as if you're flying in a plane or a hang glider over a bunch of different scenes. It's located here in this hangar in this park. Uh, we do have the exact same ride in Epcot. Uh, um, we actually noticed that our screen is a little bit bigger, but otherwise it's the same ride. Now, the catch is, is that most time of year, this is soaring around the world, where you soar over iconic locations around the world, like the Taj Mahal, the islands. It's a beautiful ride. There are smells and scenes, and it's amazing. The original version of this ride is soaring over California, and here in Disneyland, soaring over California typically returns every single year during the Food and Wine Festival. So it is currently soaring over California, where you soar over different California scenes, including the very famous Orange Grove scene with that delicious orange smell that a lot of people remember from their childhoods. So Soren definitely gets more popular when it's Soren over California just because it's a rarer occurrence, but both versions of the ride are a must-do. So whichever one is here while you're in DCA, you better hop on. Disney World comparison. Well, like you said, we have the exact same ride in Epcot. However, yeah. I will say that screen size difference is a big difference. Yeah, we were on the bottom of this ride when we rode it the other day, and you could see just like where the screen ended almost the whole time. Yeah, it really ruined the effect. If you ride Soren in the center of the theater, it's a lot more of a immersive yeah. experience than it was here, but it's still an absolute blast, and you're totally right that that orange smell is way better than the grass you get in Soren around the world. I'm just there for the smells. If you're in Disneyland, no matter what park, you got to get a churro, and Willie's Churros is the place to do it here. That's not officially on our list. Don't, don't tell anyone I told you that. We, we're only supposed to have 20. 
So, so just, just shh, this is between us. Our next must do is going to be Carthay Circle Restaurant or Carthay Circle Lounge Alfresco Dining. Carthay Circle Restaurant is a rather expensive sort of signature dining experience in California Adventure. It is a big reservation. It takes a lot of time. But if you want to eat at a relatively famous Disneyland restaurant, then that is the one you're going to want to do. Um, it's got a menu of some pretty amazing California-inspired eats. And the reviews of the spot are pretty spectacular. If you don't have the time or the budget to do the full Carthay Circle experience, I can highly recommend Carthay Circle Lounge Alfresco Dining. And then I did this during our Disney California Adventure Perfect Day, which you can see on the channel now. We got the Vietnamese twice cooked beef lettuce wraps, as well as a lot of other great stuff off of the menu. Um, some amazing drinks. The service was spectacular, and it is one of the best uh, bars. I hear people rave about the bartenders and the bar service here. So, Carthay Circle Lounge Al Fresco Dining, you eat right on the patio overlooking Buena Vista Street. Sometimes the jazz band will play. You can see the citizens of Buena Vista Street strolling around sometimes. So it's got really amazing atmosphere and really amazing eats and drinks. So either one of those is an option. I'm gonna rate this one PG-13 because your kiddo uh, probably doesn't care about amazing, amazing dining <laughs> like you can get at Carthay Circle. But you know, so you can take them there anyway. They can't stop you. Um, Disney World comparison. It's giving me Brown Derby vibes, but we didn't go. It's a must do. Why didn't you bring me, Quincy? Um, Over here. Uh, I'm gonna cut the cameras. Mike and Sully to the rescue. This is a Monsters Inc. themed attraction. It is super fun because it's actually a re-theme of the wildly hated Superstar Limo attraction where you rode in a, a slow moving limo through LA while celebrities popped up out of you. Yes, really, Jackie Chan was there. Um, we'll be Goldberg as well. Now it is a very cute Monsters Inc. attraction that takes you through the story of Monsters Inc. and boosts escapades through Monstropolis. It is super fun. I actually really love this one. I do not think it's worth a 60 minute wait. This one has a dramatic drop in wait time towards the end of the day. So that's my pro tip here. So if you want to ride this one, wait till the end of the day. But you got to ride it because you got to see Roz and do some paperwork probably. I'm giving this ride PG. No, G. Give me a G. Good for everybody. Everybody can ride this ride. They can all look at the monsters. What do you think Disney World defied? Oh, I really can't compare this to anything at Disney World. Uh, Why? Because there's no Jackie Chan? There's no ride as lame, I'll say. Like, well, I liked, uh, I liked the version of it now. I, this was really a must-do for me because I'm a big Michael Eisner fan, and I wanted to witness his folly. You heard it here first, folks. Jack is a big Michael Eisner fan, and that's true. We are ending where you enter Disney California Adventure on Buena Vista Street. This is a land that is very true to the original vision of Disney California Adventure. It really feels like you are walking through the streets of Hollywood at the time that Walt would have been doing so when he first went. So it's a really nice area. I think it's got a great vibe, especially now that the park has been plussed up in a lot of other ways to include properties that you love. Um, it's just a very fun park. But we've got one finale must-do here on Buena Vista Street, and it is not to say hi to Goofy, but am, am I supposed to not? Look at that man. Love his tie. I love his flower brooch. Do you think it squirts water? Oh, I bet. I'd wear that whole outfit. <laughs> hi, Goofy. Hi, Goofy. <laughs> love the tie. <laughs> We're here for our final must-do here at Trolley Candy Treats. This is the candy store bake shop. It's connected to the Fiddler, Pfeiffer, and Practical Cafe, which is the Starbucks location, as well as Clarabelle's hand-scooped ice cream. So lots of sweets, lots of treats in this little section, but we are specifically headed to that bakery case. Our final must-do is churro toffee. This thing is a huge chunk of toffee covered in the same, like, cinnamon sugar that you get on a churro. It is loved by many 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 people it is very sweet and it is very hard on your teeth but not as hard as some toffees so i i don't actually struggle with this and i have pretty sensitive teeth great to bring home great as a souvenir and absolutely spectacular jack's never had it so we're gonna split this crunchy so good that is really good super crunchy super sweet really like falls apart when you bite into it and then once it gets into your mouth it's kind of a combination of the sticky sweet toffee texture and a melty buttery texture mostly tastes like toffee caramelized sugar so if that's your jam that's it's my jam i love toffee and i love this treat emma is not as big a fan of this one and i think she's wrong um my friend aj from disney food Walk once told me she would not talk to me if i didn't get this on my first trip to disneyland so i don't know if that's true but she's serious about her churro toffee 
definitely a must do. Try this. Even if you can't eat it while you're in the park, grab a piece to take home. It packs well, so uh, definitely a must do. And now we're listening to Jazz eating churro toffee. It's the dream. Gonna be PG because it is hard on the teeth and not everybody can do that, but. I think it has nuts in it too. It has nuts in it. Um, Disney World comparison? I assume they have toffee at Disney World. I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of all of their food offerings like you do. They have toffee. Okay. It's just like the toffee at Disney World, but it's not, not as good. No, better. Wait. Yeah, better. And those are the must-dos at Disney California Adventure. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. Hopefully Jack has been helpful with his takes. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go check out our full must-dos in Disneyland. I'll see you there. Bye!